The other methods that we've talked about so far have complete have always used equally spaced points. And so I've drawn a function here so you can see an example of when that might not be a good idea. Um, so we have this function that is relatively unchanging for a period of time and then it changes rapidly and then it doesn't change again. Well if we use equal uh, step sizes then we're gonna have to use a small enough step size that we can capture this behavior in here and so we've got to really really divide it down um, because until we get a small enough step size that we really do a good job of capturing this behavior in here our integral is going to be off. Uh, the other thing is we may not even be able, we may not even detect uh, that it's off. So that's something that um, requires a little bit more thinking. And if you look here, really using just one using just one step like between here and here would be fine. And then using one step between here and here be, would be fine. Like even the trapezoid rule would do pretty good there. And then if we just refine the number of steps that we use right in this area, then uh, that would be uh, a lot more efficient. And this is actually exactly what adaptive quadrature does. And it, it, it refines the step sizes in areas or in regions where the function changes rapidly. And this is how it works. So I've drawn a couple of uh, a couple of functions here, and uh, we're going to start out with exactly the same thing that we've been doing. So we have um, an interval a to b where we want to estimate the area under this under this area and the region uh, between a and b, and and we can do that with uh, a step size of h1. So I've depicted the step size here as h1. And we're just going to call that IH1, just like we did before. But here we're going to use the Simpson one-third rule instead of the trapezoid rule, which we used in the ex uh, Richardson extrapolation example. So we're going to use um, the Simpson one-third rule for this. And then we can refine the step size, right? We can, on the same interval, same function, we can refine the step size uh, to one-half. And then we can do uh, Simpson apply Simpson's one-third rule to each portion of this, so we do the composite Simpson, or the the multiple application uh, Simpson one-third rule, and uh, we can get an estimate for the integral of this, and, uh, and we can call that IH2, uh, and we have IH1. And just as we did in Richardson extrapolation, we can come up with, and I've shown this here, we can come up with an equation for the error. Uh, based on the integral at h1 and the integral of h2, we come up with this equation for the error. So we can represent the error, and this time, uh, rather than using uh, the error estimate for refinement or for for refining our estimate, which which we will do, but not until after we've checked the error. So we we check the error of of h2, the e error error of um, uh, in the integral uh, represented with h2, recalling that i uh, i equals i h whatever plus e h. So um, the integral is equal to the estimate plus the error, and so we're estimating the error here as 1 15th i h2 min minus i h1. And so this is the error estimate for for um, doing the the Simpson one-third rule and then a multiple application Simpson one-third rule with half the step size. Um, so uh, then what can we do? Well, we, we compare that error and we say, is this error a less than some threshold? And if it's, if it's a low enough error, we're done. And obviously in this example, it, it would be pretty good. Um, but if it's not a low enough error, then uh, we we do it again, and so then we will go. So we had gone before here, having the step size. We're going to go again, and we're going to half the step size again. But when we half the step size again, we're just going to half the step size then uh, for each of these regions here. I'll call that region two and region one, and we half the step size. So then we look at the estimated integral for region 1 and compare it to the integral that we estimate with a half step size for region 1 we do and if that's good enough 
then we get our final integral estimate for region 1. And if this one's good enough, then we get our final integral estimate for region 2, and we're done with, with each subregion just with one more refinement. But if it's not, then we apply this all over again, and you can see how they will get smaller and smaller, but only for the regions where the, where the error is, is above our tolerance. Now, uh, the other thing I'll note here is that we actually do, after we compare our error, we actually do use uh, this error estimate in, in, in computing our new integral estimate. We do say that i is equal to, and, and of course, it's, it's just approximate, but that's our best estimate of our integral then, will equal um, i h2 plus 1 15th i h2 minus i h1. And the other thing that we need to note here is that this equation right here actually turns out to be um, exactly Boole's rule. Boole's rule. So, um, and so after that, if, if we have low enough error, that's, that's when we stop.